This video is a continuation from the previous video. Okay, so telephoto lenses are lenses that allow you to zoom in from 55 to up to about 600. I, I haven't looked lately. I think you might do even closer than 600. Um, there are things to use when you can't get close enough to your subject, so you want to zoom in. Generally, wildlife that has a short uh, flight time so that you can't get close enough. Um, sporting events where you're not allowed to get close enough. Um, planets. So there's all kinds of reasons to use these lenses. Uh, 70 to 300 is pretty common lens. There's also a 55 to 200 lens. Um, there are, they're very expensive. I mean, it even says it right here, really expensive. And then when they zoom like this, they're very, very, very heavy. I mean, the one that I, the one that I have, that's a zoom, it's, um, what is it? It's an 80 to 400. It's so heavy. It, it's so heavy that it has to be on the tripod and the camera hangs off. Um, but yeah, these, these are very expensive, thousands of dollars. But, you know, if that's what you want to do and you make money off of it, it pays for itself. And that's, this is what I mean by the, the tripod. Here's the tripod. You have to use a tripod. The mount is on the lens and the camera is not, it, this is so heavy that the mount is on the on it and not on the camera and the camera hangs off the back of the the lens like this and so that's one of those extreme zoom but it's a difference between this shot and this shot and that is such a great shot of that cute little squirrel and another thing that happens with those lenses is the the background blurs out like that yeah these 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 people who shoot these ty types of shots that people just melt over they're using those 600 I forget to look it up I don't know what comes out I don't know if they're I don't know what goes I don't know the highest end right now they're using those high end and I, I'm pretty sure there's 1200 right all these are zoomed way in what a beautiful photo we actually have a, a blue heron that comes comes down here to the lake he's He's really, he's really beautiful. I've seen him fly. It's just, it's like watching a dinosaur fly. Wide angle lenses are when you want to mostly do landscape. Um, they're, they're 14 millimeter, 20, 21, 24. They're also zoom lenses, wide angle lenses are zoom. They're actually not that expensive. Um, you get very distorted, uh, the, I'm going to tell you the further away you go from 35, the more distortion there is in your image. So you have to learn how to work with that and then also how to fix that in Photoshop. Photoshop has some, in Lightroom, has some ways that you can um, adjust for the distortion, which is usually curve. But this really allows you to zoom out and get these really great wide angle shots like that that's the result of a wide angle lens it's probably I have a lens similar to that it's probably about 14 millimeter yeah you see how this is probably not curved but it it's curved here and that's what it does you see how it curves this this I can promise you that is not curved in real life as you can see back here, it's not curved. So that's what begins to happen is that with these lenses, the closer you get to the camera, the more distortion there is. But you can get that whole scene in your shot. And the thing though you wanna be careful with when you have a lens like that is most people don't think about the foreground. And this is a great example of thinking about the foreground. They made sure they had a foreground and that you could see it was flowers. Because often people will take these shots and, you know, the closest you'll see to anything will be back here and you won't have a foreground and it just doesn't work. Another great uh, example of use with a wide angle lens. Fisheye lenses are uh, 
eight to 24 millimeter and they literally give the look of as if your eye you were looking through the eye of a fish they look like that looks like a fish eye but also it creates that and you see how it, it this is it creates this distortion of curving things like that and obviously that's how much it distorts it <clears throat> I don't mind the distortion here because they've managed to keep this not distorted so the rest of this is kind of cool in fact, they over distorted this. I can I can assure you, they took that into Photoshop and distorted it more to create to create that. And it's a great shot. It's a really great shot. And they took out the that's definitely a wide angle, if not fisheye lens, and they took the distortion out. Um, zoom lenses obviously are when you can have multiple um ranges so you can zoom in and out the they're really great for weddings they're not as sharp as the prime lenses but um they allow you to carry one lens instead of multiple lenses and that's often great when you're doing action shots like you would be at a wedding and then again just you know what what changes when you're taking a, a photo of someone and you can see how things change and she's her face is even starting to get distorted with these lenses that's actually this is what a lot of people like to do for if you're going to shoot someone and you want the background the background's important use a zoom lens get far away and then zoom in and the compression on this is really nice and the background will be not too in focus and not too out of focus. But if you care about the person, right, get closer to them and shoot with a 50. Okay, so this is the difference between what they call a consumer level, meaning affordable zoom lens, and one of those expensive prime lenses. And you can see the one on the photo on the right is much sharper as a fixed prime lens, probably a 50 millimeter lens. And then you can always, right? So here's the thing with the, with the zoom, you can always do this. You can always zoom in. Also with the prime lenses, you can always crop. So you just have to figure out what, which you prefer. It's a great photo this one's this one's really great but these are both great photos so a zoom lens will allow you to capture both and that's why wedding photographers use them little girl with the grass it's a nice portrait abstraction this is a reflection of the building off of another building and it's pretty cool um, macro lenses allow you to get really close. You know how if you take a regular lens and you try to get you try to get closer than a foot or even maybe eight inches, um, you start to it starts to get blurry and then eventually it won't focus at all. You need a macro lens for that. They are very expensive. Um, they tend to they do they tend to have long focusing times. They tend to be hard to focus because the depth of field on them is so narrow even at the even at the smaller apertures that it's hard to focus them and i will focus my camera manually using the viewfinder zoomed in um, and it does take a while to get it focused properly and so i will shoot multiple shots with multiple focuses there were some guys reading about who did a series of of he wanted to do extreme high resolution large prints of insects and he photographed them um with thousands of of um narrow ranged of uh, apertures and he got these incredibly detailed photos that he blew up 
And it took him, it took him years to photograph one object. One object. The cat is making a noise back here. Are you done? Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's see what those do here. That's what it looks like. That's what one looks like anyway. Um, and those are the kind of photographs that you take with a with a, you can take with a macro. You get those really close up. See the detail in the insects and the beautiful shot. Really close to the butterfly there. Okay. Um, parts of the camera. The mirror. <laughs> that is the mirror inside your camera that helps you see. Right? So the light comes in, goes to the pentaprism, and then you can see it. And then when you take a picture, it moves out of the way so that the sensor can be exposed back here. And that is a camera sawed in half. Isn't that insane? All that detail. And this is just showing you, this is, you're seeing it. And then when you go to take the picture and you press the shutter, the, you see the mirror moves up so that the light can now hit the sensor. Okay. And there's the sensor. And it, it sensitivity um, allows it to record and then save the image. So what happens is the light gets exposed on the sensor and you can control the brightness of the sensor by the ISO. And we'll talk more about this in photography too. I'm just showing you the, the different um, standard settings for the, the sensor. And that's just, this is just talking about noise. We're gonna talk more about this in photography too. So. It's just it's just letting you know that um, this is a function on your camera on your DSLR. It, you want to be able to control that. Uh, the tilting mirror or the pentaprism up here, and that just allows you the light to get through and allows you to see through the viewfinder, and it corrects it so that you see it right side up, because the camera actually shoots the image upside down, just like your eye and your retina. C upside down. This also works upside down. And then you have the live view image sensor and that is the that is the screen on the back of your camera. This is the live view image sensor. This allows you to see what the sensor sees. Okay, I'm going to stop this one here and continue in the next video.